In this lesson video, we're going to start day one of unit four, and we'll be talking about solving proportions and polygon similarity. The first thing we want to look at is what a ratio is. Now, you've probably heard this before, but a ratio is simply a comparison of two or more numbers using division. Okay, we can write ratios as fractions then. We can write ratios using the word two, like a to b, or we could write ratios using a colon to replace the word two. So we would still read that a to b. So in our first example, we've got the ratio of two complementary angles is three to seven. We wanna find those angles. Now the word complementary, complementary, remember, means they add up to 90 degrees. So when it says that the ratio of the angles is 3 to 7, that's not saying that the angles are 3 degrees and 7 degrees. Obviously, those don't add up to 90. But those are the proportions with which we would get up to 90 degrees for a total. So these would have a common factor. Uh, we're just going to call it x that has been simplified out of that ratio. Well, if one angle we can call 3x, the other angle we can call 7x, that means my equation can be 3x plus 7x equals that 90. And then we just combine our like terms to 10x. And if we divide by 10, x is 9. Now they want the angle measures themselves, so I go back to my 3x for one angle. 3 times 9 is 27 degrees. And 7 times 9 would be 63 degrees. All I did was plug 9 in for x into the 3x and the 7x. But we can also use this for more than two values at a time. We can do what's called an extended ratio. And this is an example of an extended ratio. The ratio of the sides of triangle ABC is 2 to 2 to 3. And so ABC has a perimeter of 392 inches. So to find the longest side, we need to figure out what that common factor is that they have simplified this ratio uh, using. So I'm going to rewrite it as 2x, 2x, and 3x. And instead of writing it as a ratio, I'm going to write it as my equation because those represent sides, and the perimeter is the sum of those sides. So I'm going to write 2x plus 2x plus 3x equals that given perimeter of 392. Then we're going to combine our like terms. 2 plus 2 plus 3 is 7x. And then we're going to divide by 7. Give me just a second to get my calculator. and we get x is 56. But they want the longest side. Now the longest side would be the 3x. So I'm gonna do three times 56. And we get 168 inches. <clears throat> okay, and so you'll do some problems today where you have to use that extended ratio. And this leads us to the idea of what a proportion is. Proportions are two equal ratios, like this. A over B equal to C over D. Those are, that's an example of a proportion. <coughs> Excuse me. And so to solve proportions, we're using something called the cross product property. which says that if we're given that proportion, A over B equals C over D, then the cross product, A times D, has to equal the other cross product, B times C. We can cross and multiply to solve. So that's how we would do these proportions. On part A, we would cross multiply here. All right, when I cross multiply the X minus one times 19, you have to remember that that should go in parentheses. I have to do 19 times x and 19 times 1. I have to multiply to both parts of that. The other side, I just do 6 times 13, which is 78. 
and then we solve for x. So 19x equals 97. Then if we divide by 19, we get x is about 5.1. And we will round some of these. These will not always work out as nice, neat integers. We'll have some decimal answers. Okay. So on part B, we're going to cross multiply here. If I do 6 times... 3x plus 3, I got to multiply 6 by both of those, so that's 18x plus 18. And then I do 7 times x plus 16, that gives me 7x plus 112. Then we want to get our like terms on one side, so I'm going to subtract 7x from both sides, then I'll subtract 18 from both sides. So I will get 11x equals 94, and I will divide by 11, and get about 8.5. So when you're solving proportions, that means find the value of the variable that would make it true. Okay? Um, we're going to skip around on some of these. Um, we're going to skip C, but we're going to do D. What you'll notice when we do some of these cross products is that you do get some quadratics. So if I cross multiply here, x times 7 is just 7x, but then on the other side I have 3x squared, and then you have to do 3 times minus 2, which is minus 6, and this is a quadratic, so I've got to get everything on one side. So I'm going to subtract the 7x from both sides and wedge it there in the middle, and flip the 0 around to the other side. So one side is 3x squared minus 7x minus 6 equals 0. And I've got to solve that quadratic. Now, there's no common factor, so we're going to go ahead and multiply our first term and our last term to get this top number for my, my x factor method. 3 times negative 6 is negative 18. And then the bottom number is that middle number, negative 7. And I want the factors of negative 18 that would add up to negative 7. And that should be negative 9 and positive 2. So I can factor by grouping. 3x squared, instead of minus 7x, I'm going to split that into minus 9x plus 2x, and then my minus 6. I can group those together and those together. That first one has a common factor of 3x, leaving x minus 3. And the next one has a common factor of 2, leaving x minus 3. So your 2 quantities are 3x plus 2 and x minus 3. So either 3x plus 2 equals 0, which x would be negative 2 thirds, or x minus 3 equals 0, so x would be positive 3. Now this is not a real life problem, there's no measurements we're using here, um, so we don't have to worry about which one of these works and which doesn't, they both work in the original proportion. You can have negatives in the proportion, so those are your answers. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the next page. So we are going to use ratios and proportions when we talk about similar polygons. So we've talked about when polygons are congruent in the past, and that means they have the exact same size and shape. But if polygons have the same shape, but different sizes, we call them similar polygons. Polygons are similar if corresponding angles are congruent, but corresponding sides are proportional. Not congruent, but proportional. Excuse me. The ratio of corresponding sides is called the scale factor. If polygons are similar, then their perimeters are also proportional. 
Okay? Now, just like when we talked about congruent statements, um, in similarity statements like this, the order does matter. So when we talk about scale factor, that order matters. So I want to compare the scale factor, which is that ratio of proportionality from one set of sides to their matching corresponding sides. You should be able to tell which sides go together because the order of individual sides also matters. So like on triangle ABC, the first one, you've got a length of 8, a length of 10, and a length of 18. Well, in DEF, you have lengths of 12, 15, and 27. So the shortest side of one triangle goes with or corresponds to the shortest side of the other triangle, and the middle corresponds to the middle, and the longest corresponds to the longest. So those should match up and go together. So when I'm comparing triangle ABC to triangle DEF in this order, I'm going to pick a side from one of them. Let's say I chose AB, which is 8, and compared it to its matching side, DE, or 12, on the other one. Now, most of the time, I'm actually going to write these as a fraction so that I can reduce that. And these can both be divided by 4, leaving us the fraction 2 thirds. This is a 2 thirds scale factor. Now, is that the same scale factor as going DEF to ABC? No, it's not. The scale factor of DEF to ABC would flip that around and be 3 to 2. Let me clear up that too. It didn't look very good. There you go. So a similarity statement would be written like this. If I wanted to pick this method, okay, this order, ABC to DEF, I would say triangle ABC is similar, and that's just the symbol for similar. It's like the top part of the congruent sign without the equals. Similar to triangle DEF. Now, we do want to make sure the corresponding angles go together. A corresponds to D, B corresponds to E, C corresponds to F. So that order matches. So let's try and do some of this here. I want you to find the scale factor of GDO to AC, ATC. Now these letters kind of cut off, but you can tell this is A, this is C. Okay? So we're going to pick a side from GDO. Let's pick the uh, longest side this time. That'd be the length of 4. That should correspond to the other longest side, 16. And we have to go in this order because that's what it tells me to do. So that would be 4 over 16, which reduces to 1 fourth. So there's your scale factor. What we can do now is we can use that scale factor to solve problems. Like in example 5, if these are similar, we're told they are similar to each other, that means their lengths are proportional. That means I can write a proportion. Fraction equals fraction. And they give you a scale factor of 6 to 5. So I'm going to write that as my first side of my proportion, my first ratio as a fraction. 6 over 5. And that has to match up to the comparison of these other two matching sides. Well, pay attention to which side is longest. And this time we can go off of how the triangles look. This top triangle looks like it's bigger. So the X, being from the bigger triangle, should go on the top of this other fraction because the 6 is bigger than the 5. That means 28, the corresponding side, goes on the bottom. And now all we have to do is cross multiply. 5 times x has to equal 6 times 28. 168, and then we divide by 5. Which is about 33.6. It actually works out as exactly 33.6. Okay? So we can do that if we are given the scale factor. We can also do that if we are not given the scale factor, but we're given another set of sides to find the scale factor. Okay, so all we have to do is set up and solve proportions. <coughs> Pardon me. So we want to pay attention to which side should match up. Now, I've got four numbers written. All four of these numbers are going to go in these four spots of my proportion. It doesn't matter where you start, but wherever you start determines how you finish the proportion. Let's say I wanted to solve with X on the top side of this. Well, X is the length of DE. DE should match up to AB. So the other part of that ratio, X should match up to AB, which is 25. So my other fraction needs to be set up the same way. So the other fraction is going to be the scale factor comparing another set of sides, 
like EF, 28, since X is on top, and it's from the same triangle as D, as 28, 28 goes on top. And then EF has to match up to BC, which is this other side, 20. Now, you could reduce that to make the numbers easier, or you could just multiply as it is. So we're going to cross multiply. If I do 25 times 28, I get 700. I'm going to divide that by 20, and I get x is the length 35. Okay? In example 7, we can set this up kind of the same way. We've got a side length of 20 and a side length of 15. We have this side length represented as 2x plus 3, but the other side length is not just 8. The other side length is the total of 20 and 8, which is 20 plus 8, or 28. So my proportion actually needs to be 20 over 28 equals 15 over 2x plus 3. Let's go ahead and solve that. We get 40x plus 60 equals 420. If I do 420 minus 60, I get 360. If I, divide, if I divide by 40, x would equal 9. Okay. So just using proportions given the similarity of two triangles. All right, so here's what we have um, as well. So if we're told that we have similar quadrilaterals this time, PQRS is similar to WXYZ. We're given these sides, sorry, these sides, and we're given the other side 75 for PS, they want the value of RS. Well, YZ comes from this one. ZW comes from this one. Okay. And PS matches up to WZ or ZW. Then RS matches up to YZ. And so if I wanted to write this as a proportion with the expressions there first, I could compare RS to its matching side YZ. That has to equal PS, I'm sorry, that should go on the top, PS to its matching side ZW. Well, then I can just fill in the numbers they give me. RS is what I'm looking for. I'm going to leave that as RS, or I can call it X. YZ is 32, and ZW is 40, and PS is 75. Well, there's your proportion. All we have to do is cross-multiply. Okay, so 40X equals 2,400 divided by 40 should get 60. So the length of P of RS, which I called X, is 60. Okay, we can set the same idea up using some algebraic expressions. This similarity statement tells you which parts go together. So I'm comparing AB and BC to RS, and then I'm going to use ST. So AB over its matching side RS has to equal BC over its matching side ST. Well, AB is X plus 2. RS is 12. BC is 4. And ST is X. So we're going to cross-multiply and solve here. 
when I cross multiply x times x plus 2, that gives me x squared plus 2x, and then 12 times 4 is 48. So I'm going to subtract that 48 from both sides, and my quadratic is x squared plus 2x minus 48 equals 0. So we need to solve this. The top number is just negative 48. The bottom number of this organizer is 2. And I want the factors of negative 48 that would add up to positive 2. Well, that should give us positive 8 and negative 6. Now, because the lead coefficient is just 1, the number in front of x squared is just 1, I don't have to go through the whole factor by grouping. This works out to be x plus 8 and x minus 6. Okay, Because we're talking about actual values of lengths of sides, um, we have to double check our answers at the end to make sure they don't give us negative lengths. So x could be negative 8 or positive 6 when we solve each of those for 0. But we want to go back to where x is used. st is the length. Since x is negative 8 in this first one, st could not actually be a negative length. And so negative 8 is not a valid answer. My only answer is 6 for x. But they want the length of ab. So ab is that valid solution 6 for x plus 2, which is 8. And this concludes our lesson video for day 1.